Anchor-associated vasculitis is a rare and severe autoimmune disease, causing inflammation and damage of small blood vessels. This disease affects multiple organs and has a high acute and chronic mortality risk, as well as high morbidity from cumulative organ damage. AAV places a significant physical and emotional burden on patients from organ damage and results in difficulty performing daily tasks and severe fatigue. With generalised symptoms, the path to diagnosis can be long, by which time inflammation has often already resulted in specific organ damage and risk of mortality. The primary objective of treatment for AAV is to achieve and sustain remission, avoiding relapse and reducing cumulative organ damage over time. Current therapy includes a combination of broad, non-specific immunosuppressants and high-dose steroids. These are used to address various inflammatory factors, but have untargeted effects. With current therapy, 53 to 64% of patients are in remission without steroid use at six months. At 18 months, only 33 to 39% of patients remain in remission without steroid use. In addition, the disease itself, as well as treatment-related adverse events, further increase the risk of organ damage and mortality. In anchor-associated vasculitis, there is loss of tolerance and development of autoantibodies, known as anchor, against proteins expressed in a type of white blood cell called neutrophils. What triggers these processes is not clear. Anchor is a key part of the diagnosis of anchor-associated vasculitis, although some patients can be anchor negative. Two main antibodies are of interest. Antibodies to proteinase 3, PR3, found mainly in GPA, and antibodies to myeloperoxidase, MPO, found mostly in MPA. Evidence suggests that ANCA is involved in the underlying pathophysiology of ANCA-associated vasculitis. The first stage in the process is loss of tolerance and the development of ANCA. The second and critical stage involves the interaction between neutrophils and the alternative complement system, an enzyme cascade crucial in inflammation. Neutrophils are primed and start to express PR3 or MPO on their cell surface, perhaps at the time of an infection. ANCA can then bind with PR3 or MPO and this activates neutrophils. Activated neutrophils stick to and penetrate the wall of small blood vessels and release a variety of inflammatory mediators such as reactive oxygen species, cytokines and neutrophil extracellular traps or NETs which damage tissues and also activate the alternative complement pathway. The alternative complement pathway is an enzyme cascade that is critical in the vasculitic process resulting in the formation of protein fragment C5A, a complement activated product which is involved in the recruitment of inflammatory cells. The binding of C5A to its key receptor C5AR is of prime importance and leads to the inflammatory cycle driving the disease, creating a self fueling inflammatory amplification loop. Activated neutrophils lead to inflammation, adhere to small blood vessel walls and begin to leave the circulation, leading to further tissue inflammation. Acting through C5AR, C5A attracts and then primes even more neutrophils. Small blood vessel walls are destroyed over time, enabling blood plasma to spill out of the vessel. Blood clotting factors are also activated by C5A, contributing to the damage. Current therapies do not selectively target the vicious cycle of amplification through C5A and neutrophil interaction that leads to irreversible and devastating vasculitic damage. Gaining efficient control of vasculitis activity and preserving organ and tissue function while avoiding treatment-related adverse events remains an unmet need in anchor-associated vasculitis.